We have been dreaming of having a finished building with a finished workshop for over a year now. And that time has finally come, which means that we get to move on to something that I am super excited about. It's time to get started on our first real fabrication project in our finished workshop. We are in the dead of winter right now and we need to get this project done so that we can put it to work. I started dreaming up this project well over a year ago because I think it's gonna be so much fun to clear snow with the army truck. My initial thought was to just put the plow we already had on the army truck, but that plow is not really wide enough. So that led me to shopping for new plows. And while shopping for new plows, I found something way better than a plow. Just as winter was starting, Riley came to me with a for sale ad for a giant piece of equipment for sale in Montana. And he told me that he thought it would probably maybe work to put on the front of the army truck. So we hopped in the camper, we drove, I don't even know how many hours in the middle of a snowstorm, and we bought this. This is an eight foot wide, four foot tall, industrial grade snowblower that came from Yellowstone National Park. It is huge. It could swallow me in one. But there are some glaring problems with this solution, which is that one, it's meant for a tractor and there's no way to attach it to the front of this army truck. And two, we don't have a way to power it off this army truck. I think I've got some tricks up my sleeve and this is gonna be a fun build. Step one to this build was finding a way to power it. And Riley had a crazy idea and it was actually for sale just down the road from us. This might rank as our silliest Craigslist adventure ever. I just bought the car that I have been dreaming about. It is a 2003 Pontiac Sunfire. And when I say I've been dreaming about this car, it is not the car of my dreams but it has been in my dreams. All right, here we go. <laughs> we'll see if we make it. The tires are completely bald and the brakes like almost sort of work. We're only about 20 miles from our house, so <laughs> fingers crossed that we make it. Luckily, the car was not that far from us. Um, because she said it needs a brake job or the brakes don't work. Riley drove it and he decided it's okay to drive it home. So hopefully we make it home because it is about to get dark. Oh, this is a really steep hill. I hope the brakes hold out. <laughs> I don't know if you guys caught that, but the trunk lid is literally flying open. I haven't even looked in the trunk yet. Oh, <laughs> we just slid. Oh, it's literally a bungee down. Is there anything in it? Luckily, there's nothing in it. This is the dude. <laughs> Every bump. <laughs> it, it runs like, it runs really well. This car is fast. That thing is so fast. He just pulled onto the paved road and he's gone. Like, here's what's gonna happen. Riley has owned a few little silly cars in his life and he falls in love with them because he can just be silly and not worry about them and drive them way too fast. And I'm pretty sure that he's falling in love with this car right now and he's not going to want to take it apart. The last hurdle is going to be whether or not this thing can make it up the steep part of our driveway. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> All right, guys, no cheating, but I want you to drop it in the comments as to whether or not you think I'm gonna make it up the steep part of the driveway. That's not even the steepest spot and I was sliding all over the place. I guess the only real goal to all of this is don't crash so bad that I like seriously hurt the car. <laughs> That's the goal. Here we go. Oh, can't even get going from here. <laughs> it's flat and we're spinning tires. Okay, rolling into it, gaining speed. <laughs> now I know how to get up that hill. It's decision time. Courtney is on the new road, but I think I'm gonna take the old one. Going for the pass, going for the pass. Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> I won. <laughs> this car is awesome. <laughs> it's like this little red rocket. You're just like. <laughs> I don't even, why do we bother with four wheel drive SUVs when we could just drive these? <laughs> We'd like to thank Huel for sponsoring today's video. With winter here, things are a bit hectic. And the last thing that I wanna do is stop what I'm doing to go make lunch. We used to skip lunch, but that's not healthy and it leaves us both a bit grumpy. We found Huel a few months ago and I'm not kidding when I say we've had it for lunch almost every single day. Huel Black Edition contains everything our body needs in a convenient on the go bottle. It's 100% nutritionally complete, contains 27 essential vitamins and minerals, is super high in protein and has less than 5% sugar. It's also an easy source of fiber, contains probiotics and has no artificial sweeteners. It's perfect for breakfast, or lunch. I love that we can make it ahead of time, head out on an adventure, and have a satisfying meal whenever we want. My go-to lately is the salted caramel, and Courtney loves the vanilla. So get started with Huel today by clicking the link in the description below. And you'll even get a free t-shirt and a guide to get you started. So thanks again to Huel for sponsoring today's video and keeping us fueled all winter long. Oh my goodness. So today marks day one of the epic snowblower build. We spent the last few days, we got things set up and organized in here for this project. I think there's enough space in here to get this project done and let's get to it. I didn't close the door and the snow grabbed it and ripped out of my hands and it was like a, basically became a, a door pile. She's married now. For the record, I had no idea that skid steer was actually strong enough to pick that car up. <laughs> that was awesome. 2004 Pontiac Sunfire. This car comes equipped with a GM 2.2 liter Ecotec engine, which is a super lightweight, high power four cylinder. The plan is to use as much as possible from this car to power this new snowblower. But buying the whole car, we got everything we were gonna need. The engine, the starter, the transmission, the drive shafts, the battery, the fuel tank, the fuel pump, the wiring harness, the accelerator pedal, the gauges, we, we got the whole car. Step one is to start disassembling it and see, I'm hoping that the entire sort of front subframe can come out together as a unit with the engine, transmission, radiator, all that still attached. <laughs> I just locked the keys in the car. Woo! Okay, crisis averted. <laughs> I can't get it in the shop. Now what do I do? It has been super cold here, negative 12 Fahrenheit. Today started at around zero Fahrenheit and it's been steadily warming up all day. It's currently 23 degrees Fahrenheit, but it's raining. So as soon as that rain hits the ground, it freezes and it's making this quicksand. It's not snow, it's like quicksand. Look at this stuff. It is heavy 
It is, it is the weirdest stuff I've ever messed with. I'm currently plowing the steep part of our road. Started up there, all good. The further I came down, the more and more I got sucked into this ditch. And now I'm stuck. I'm gonna try to self recover. Man, I wish I would've put the winch on the back. We have a winch for this truck to put in the hitch on the back. Slid all the way back down the hole. Okay, what else can I do? Okay, I got the front of the truck mostly dug out. For the record, I wasn't gonna bring a camera. I wasn't gonna film, and Cordy said, you better get, grab a camera in case you get stuck. Here I am. I think she jinxed it. What do you guys think? Drop in the comments below. Did Cordy jinx me? Hello? I'm sorry that you're stuck. Do you need to phone a friend? What would you even bring down here? Uh, shovel? Well, I've been shoveling for... I don't know, a while, a long time. Merry Christmas. Oh yeah, I forgot to add, it's Christmas Eve. Well, I just made it from there to there. And now I'm stuck again. So I just need to get now from there to there. Looks like I'm not the only one stuck tonight. I looked up, we got a neighbor down there also stuck. Well, hopefully I can get unstuck so I can go help them get unstuck. I'm not kidding myself out of this. At least not easily. Time to call it in. Can you bring this? I think the Snowverlander. Okay. Thank you, Courtney. See you in a few. Merry Christmas Eve. I just finished using the skid steer to blow most of the road, but there's one section that Riley still has to do with the plow truck until our ice studs arrive. That section of road is 22% grade. He needs rescuing, so I'm gonna hop in the Snowverlander and see if I can't go get him out. Look at that beautiful Christmas tree. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's like an ice rink out here. All right, Snowverlander. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. It's freezing rain. Yeah. And now it's raining. I think I should have phoned a friend earlier, guys. Every time I should just call Courtney. Why do I wait so long to just call Courtney? Okay, the neighbor can't get up his driveway. He slid down the hill, so we're gonna see if we can't help him get unstuck, and then we'll go back to plowing. Well, that was an adventure. Luckily, it was still less of an adventure than last time it rained on the snow. Unlike last year, we got our plowing done, we made it back all in one piece, and nothing's broken. I thought we started early enough in the day. It's really hard to time the storm being done before it warms up, before the rain. I think I'm supposed to say Merry Christmas to all. And to all, a good night. Okay, I, I'm trying to make a decision right now, which is, does it work better to start cutting the front end of this off so that I can use all the existing engine and transmission and battery mounts and stuff, or is it better just to pull the engine and transmission out together and build an all new mount for it? It's, I don't know, I can't decide. I think I found the source of the funny noises that the previous owner told me about. 
Not a lot of brake pad left on this guy. In fact, pretty much no brake pad. This thing's needed a brake job for probably 20 or 30,000 miles. I haven't been filming a whole lot because it's mostly just unbolt this, unplug that, pull that out of the way. But I think I'm on the last step before this engine's ready to start coming out, which is to cut the exhaust. I think I'm probably into this project about four hours at this point, which is pretty impressive. This car has been really easy to take apart. So I think my plan, and this may not work at all, but I think my plan is to basically cut the front of this unibody off. That way I can reuse like the battery mount and the radiator mounts and all the electronic stuff and not have to refabricate all of that stuff. The fan shroud, like if I can just kind of cut this thing off in the front, it's already all done for me. So we'll see if this works out. <laughs> One side's free! It feels too easy. For the last few hours, I've been working on pulling the dash out of this thing so I can get to the wiring that's behind it. And the reason I'm doing this is I think that in order for this to work correctly, I'm gonna need the cruise control. And to make the cruise control work, I need the body control module and all of the wiring that's associated with basically everything behind the dash. Every time I unplug something, I label it because that's gonna make tracking this down again later a lot easier. Oh well. Okay, that is the under dash wiring harness, or at least most of it. There's still some stuff under there I unplugged. If that's not a little overwhelming, I don't know what is. Welcome to underneath the car. I think this is the last piece I need out of the car, which is the gas tank and the fuel pump. Everything should be loose, and I think it's just gonna fall out. Hopefully I don't spill fuel everywhere. Apparently there was no gas in it. I don't know if I ever even looked at the gas gauge. It's also a unfortunately awkward shape. Well, it's the day after our ice storm and we were headed to town to get water and fuel, but I think we have a little obstacle first. Whoops. Turn. Always keep a chainsaw in the plow truck for this exact reason. Nothing about that was very safe. <laughs> well, not a lot's gotten done in the last day or so in these extremely cold uh, negative 12 Fahrenheit temperatures, but it started to warm up a little bit today. It's a whole whopping three degrees outside. The next step is to pull the Sunfire out of here, out of my way and bring the blower in. I have been a little bit reluctant to start our equipment in these cold temps, but I'm getting stir crazy and I can't wait any longer. Let's go see if the skid steer will start. Good first start. Here goes nothing. This says negative two Fahrenheit.
That skid steer is awesome. Now all we have to do is put that on that. 